Hello, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel. We are back with Caller X Malice, almost forgot the game for a second there. Okazuki Throughout, let's go. They're homemade. They look so good though. They look like you bought them at a store. <laughs> you flatter me. These are very easy to make. I could make these even without a recipe. Really? Um, guess I'll dig in then. He blinked a few times, then slowly bit into a scone. Would it suit his tastes? Would he like it? I nervously waited for his reaction. Wow. How is it? What the heck? This is so good. Really? I'm glad you like it. I've never had anything this delicious. Y you must be exaggerating. That said, I was rather proud of the way I'd blended the milk tea flavor with the scones. The pound cake had nuts and dried fruits in it. I was confident enough in the flavor that I thought even Kazuki would eat it. I'm glad he likes it. Have you trained at a patisserie before? Uh... Okazuki asked me another serious question while munching. I didn't train anywhere. Have you never had home cooking like this before? Nope. So, it's possible to make this stuff at home too? Okazuki, are you bad at cooking? It's more like I've never tried it. Ha. Huh. I was surprised, but I remembered how he reacted to seeing my home earlier and connected the dots. But don't you live alone? Hmm. I have a kitchen, but it's still clean as new. I cut myself whenever I use a knife, and if I use a gas stove, I'll end up burning my clothes. Isn't that dangerous? I'm kind of like that, just not the burning the clothes part. I end up burning my hand or something. And I do cut myself almost every time I use a knife. It's... It's annoying. <laughs> so his cooking skill wasn't really the issue. Speaking of which, Yunagi's pretty amazing too. Maybe he wasn't actually a cop before all this. Maybe he was the chef of, for the Imperial Palace. Imperial Palace? Is Yunagi that good of a cook? Yeah, the man works magic. He's got a very simple but tasty cooking style. Not exactly a surprise. Yunagi looks like he can take care of himself. But I thought Yunagi was trying really hard to avoid Okazuki. Had Okazuki tasted his cooking before? Maybe he pressured him into letting him try it. He's not just a good cook. He keeps the place tidy. I respect people who excel in that area. Are you bad at other things besides cooking, like cleaning and laundry? I think it's more that I don't really grasp the concept. I've done my own laundry before, but when I did, my favorite cardigans shrank all the way down to a kid's size. I've used a cleaning service ever since. I can clean, but I can't use a vacuum cleaner. Oh, one time I bought one of those robot vacuums because I thought it'd make things easier. I suppose anyone could use one of those. But one day, I left the front door open and it ran away. What? And it never came home. Please close your front door. I thought he should pay more attention to his own life instead of sending me warnings. I'm no good with technology. Yoshinari called me an analog man once. Take this TV remote, for example. Uh, that controls the air conditioner. Oops. Um, this one? Uh, that's for the room lights. Look, there's only two buttons. I like how even the small change of the lights, if you noticed, it like dimmed for a short time when he pushed the button for the lights. That is, that's like qu quite a lot of work into that just to do that for that short amount of time. I wearily corrected him. Okazuki just tilted his head in confusion. A normal person wouldn't make these mistakes. The buttons didn't even look the same. Rather than being bad with machines, it's more like he's confused by normal life. I'd seen him working as an SP a lot lately, so I'd forgotten that I used to think he was an airhead. But it was clear enough that he just didn't pay attention to things outside of his work. It was very like him in a way. He was the type who kept his mind on the job. I can't imagine what your daily life must be like. Come to think of it, I'd seen him sleeping in the alley by the detective office before. Don't tell me. Hey... 
I do have a place to live, you know. He cut me off before I could say it. I go home when I want to sleep properly. It just doesn't feel very cozy. His lazy smile turned bitter. I remembered I'd only known him for a few days. We'd been together a lot and had disagreements. But I had no idea what kind of life he led. I didn't know his likes or dislikes. I've just come to the realization that I don't know Okazaki very well. This was a good chance. I was driven by an urge to find out more. So, what are you good at? Hmm, judo, kendo, and shooting, I think. They were all SP officer type skills. He fit the job profile to a T. And English, I guess. Have you lived abroad before? Nope. It's just a job requirement in the SP. Ah, I see. Foreign dignitaries receive SP protection too. English was essential for communication with VIPs, and it was likely useful in other situations too. But enough about me. Tell me about yourself. That's not fair. I don't know. There's a lot I need to know to protect you. Come on, please. We passed the time chatting with each other about each other. With each other. About each other. <laughs> That's a weird way to put it. Our likes and dislikes, our friends and respective jobs, what we watched on TV. They were all trivial topics, but I found the conversation quite pleasant. I see. I'm surprised to hear that Yoshinari used to be a delinquent. I heard he was the number two in some gang. If you ask him about it, he'll get mad at you and say, Stop asking about my dark history. <laughs> there was no shortage of things to talk about. I noticed that a long time had passed. I still had plenty of time before work, but maybe I shouldn't keep him too long. Just as I thought that. I noticed that Okazuki was watching me intently out of the corner of his eye. What is it? Oh, sorry. I shouldn't be staring at a girl's place. I don't really mind. There was something he couldn't stop looking at. I turned thinking that I'd left something strange out. Is he looking at the macaron pillows? He's gotta be. And followed his gaze to a pillow on my bed. Are you by any chance curious about this pillow? Huh? How'd you know? I just figured. Can I see it? Oh, do you mind if I touch it? Oh, um, go ahead. Okazaki quietly approached my bed and patted my pillow a few times. This is a great pillow. It's made of good material and supports your head. Um, you know your pillows. I decided to splurge a little on it. It said on TV that a good pillow can make a big difference in your sleep quality. Yep, that's right. Pillows are super important to people living in modern society. Why is he so serious about this? It shouldn't be too soft or too hard. This is just the right amount of softness. It looks really comfortable. Do you know how to choose a pillow? Um, no. You should pick the ones that hold their shape when you turn them to their side. For some reason, Okazuki was very enthusiastic and knowledgeable about the subject of pillows. This is a different definition of pillow talk. <laughs> he seemed very interested in my pillow. Well, he was sleeping when I met him back then. I thought he had been napping because his SP job was so stressful. Do you like sleeping? Yeah, I'd love to average 24 hours of sleep a day. He must have been serious, judging by the way his face tensed up when he said it. I have a lot of sleep aids. Aroma infusers, soothing sleep time CDs, and even a stuffed sheep. Also, one of these. He produced an eye mask I had seen before from his pocket. Eye masks, humidifiers, herbal air fresheners, and other stuff too. I heard they're popular with women. He was a veritable sleep aid connoisseur. Uh, would you tell me where you bought that pillow? I hope it's still in sock. Okazaki stro stroked the pillow. Okay. Like it was a precious pet. Interesting. Um, you can try it if you want. Wait, really? 
His eyes were twinkling. Sh sure, I haven't even used it yet. Oh, but I shouldn't do it on your bed. I'll test it on the floor. Before he'd finished his sentence, Okazuki was already laying on the floor, pillow under head. What? Not the floor. I don't mind. Just use my bed. Ugh. Wow. It had been only three seconds since he closed his eyes. I could hear the steady breathing of sleep. Th that was fast. I had a feeling the pillow was immaterial. Okazaki could just instantly fall asleep using any pillow. Zoom in. Smirking, I sat on the bed and observed Okazuki's sleeping face. Looking at him like this, he looks far more innocent than you'd expect. It was rude of me to think of this about an older man, but I thought it was a little cute. He did say that sleeping was his hobby, but his SP job had to be exhausting. He had to train regularly, so he probably didn't have any free time. Despite that, he still went out of his way to come see me. When I was with him, time just seemed to pass more slowly. It was peaceful, and for a while, I was able to forget about Shinjuku and the crimes happening. Even the collar on my neck faded from thought. My heart softened. Mmm. <sighs> I started to feel sleepy just by watching Okazaki. Maybe I'll just take a tiny nap on the sofa. I started to doze off. Night night. I'm one of those people, if I take a nap, I can't sleep at night. Oh, hello. Sorry to intrude. Huh? Who are you? Is that Kazuki's voice? Are you lady's little brother? You look alike. I said, who are you? <laughs> oh, you're awake. Good morning. Hey, who's this guy? Eh? 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 I couldn't grasp what was happening. My head was still in a daze. D did I fall asleep? Yeah, you looked like you were enjoying your rest, so I didn't want to wake you. He watched me sleep? Did I make any weird faces? No, you look really cute when you sleep. And you talked in your sleep a little. I talk in my sleep? W what did I say? Hmm, it's a secret. <laughs> No secrets this time. Tell me. Oh, thanks for letting me try the pillow. I'm going to go buy one. Okazaki! <sighs> As I frantically confronted Okazaki, Kazuki visibly sighed. Lady, at least tell me before you're going to bring some guy home. Huh? No, that's n not what happened here. Uh, anyway, Kazuki, where'd you go? Aren't you on break from school? No matter how many times I told Kazuki to come right home, he didn't listen to me. Today, he had gone off somewhere early in the morning. Does it matter? Of course it does. You understand, don't you? We don't know what could happen. Shut up already. I'm back, aren't I? Oh, Kazuki. Huh? There was another X day video and people were freaking out, so I came home. <clears throat> I quickly looked at my phone. Moshida had called me quite a few times. You're a pretty careless cop. Oh, Kazuki, I want to punch you. Kazuki, I... Got it. Kazuki gave me a cold glance and left the living room. I'm going to sleep. Please flirt outside. I said that's not how it is. I wanted to yell in protest, but Kazuki had already gone into his room. Anyway... The new incident took priority. Did another X day crime happen? Doop -doo -doo. I separated from Okazuki and got to the station. It was a buzz with activity. I'm sorry for being late. Nah, I'm sorry for bugging you on your break. After giving me an apology, he got straight to the matter at hand and showed me the most recent X day announcement video. The man that the cops pulled in for September killed himself in jail. But was he really the culprit? 
The truth is shrouded in darkness. After all, the cops love to set up and string up their suspects. Oh, and it looks like they think that October went by peacefully. Talk about careless and incompetent. But that's okay. Adonis will protect the good citizens of Shinjuku from the shameful police. Is this the whole thing? It didn't announce a crime like the other videos. No crime has been reported yet. Damn it, what are they scheming? It's as if they merely wanted to spread the message of police incompetence. I hesitated to say it out loud, bearing the words inside. This isn't enough for us to move on. We'll stay on alert, but we can only wait for now. The local office was receiving a flood of calls from the concerned public. You should rest until your shift begins. The way things are now, the phones will be going nuts. Once you start, you won't have time to rest. Save your strength. Understood, sir. As I walked to the break room, I thought about my plan to investigate going forward. I should look into events where people related to the police were victims. I couldn't research every possible incident, but some would be easier to research because of my position on the force. Adonis seemed to regard the police with hostility, and the police were the subject of many scandals. I also couldn't personally turn a blind eye to the wrongs that the police had committed. Like Okazuki, I felt society needed the police, all the more reason to shed light on their doings. Sugawara never would have done what she did if the police had just taken her claim seriously from the beginning. The X-Day crimes where the victims were linked to the police were April, May, and November. I wonder if November would be easiest to investigate because it's the most recent. Phone buzzing. My phone vibrated. I checked it and saw a text from Shiraishi. Are you free now? Can you meet me on the roof? Big. Yanagi and his friends are feeling lonely. Don't you want their help? Shiraishi grinned as he confronted me with his inquiry. The day after I talked to Okazuki in the park, I told Yanagi that I intended to investigate on my own. I did it because I thought that making frequent contact with Yanagi's team would just cause trouble for Okazuki. I only said I wouldn't be working alongside them. I have my reasons. Hmm, reasons? Well, whatever. Shiraishi had an odd, suggestive look on his face. So, how are you going to continue going about your investigation? I think I'll start with the November incident. Officers died in that one, and I think it'll be easier to investigate it from within the station. I see. That could be the right call. Then I'll give you my expert take on it for free this time. Please do. In November, a truck and a police motorcycle had collided head-on, killing both involved. It was thought to be an accident at first, but strange traffic signal activity was spotted in the video recordings. All of the lights had turned green at the same time, causing traffic to enter the intersection from all directions. The collision had occurred at full speed. The truck driver had a criminal record. The slain officer didn't have any outstanding issues, but maybe digging will reveal something. It's possible that he did something in the past. The police have looked into this too, but it doesn't seem like they've found anything yet. For now, that is. Shiraishi and I had the same opinion. The X-Day incidents had undoubtedly stemmed from sloppy police investigative methods and structure. The goal of the X-Day crimes was revenge. However, it likely wouldn't stop there. Adonis was trying to change Japan itself so that citizens would carry out their idea of justice. No one knew what would happen on X day in January, but the brazen nature of the crime so far suggested that it would be a ma on a massive scale. I shuddered to imagine how many victims there would be. Thirteen days left, huh? <laughs> there was thirteen days remaining. Shinjuku's future rested on us settling this. Oh, wow. The end of the chapter? Yep. Chapter four. And I'm going to let you guys go here. After it says the date on the top. When it comes up.
Oh, okay. So it's Okazaki's point of view. December 20th, 10.02 p.m., which in real life, tomorrow is December 20th. Anyway, I'll let you go. I hope you're enjoying and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.